Greetings from Skip, Victor Echo 6, Bravo, Golf Tangle once again. A little while back, uh, a good friend of mine, Tom, uh, Victor Alpha 6, Tango Alpha, approached me about uh, helping him building this little uh, portable azimuth elevation drive project for doing satellite work out in the field, say on field day or etc. This is my kind of project and I kind of took it over. Uh, sorry about that, Tom. Anyways, uh, just a brief video here and here, how we how I built it up and how well it works. It's, it's really cute. Tom had already researched some of this. He found these cute little gearhead motors that others have used and uh, also had an aluminum box to put everything in. So the first thing I had to build up was the azimuth drive part of it to couple this motor. Uh, lots of parts in my shop from all the other systems I've built over the years and uh, selected a couple of bearings and then I still had this pipe that I used for building the big dish earlier and uh, built a housing to hold the bearings into. I didn't take pictures of everything so you'll just have to uh, go along with me here that uh, <laughs> the bearings did fit inside this pipe eventually as you'll see. Then from my stockpile of uh, aluminum rod I was able to take a certain length and uh, stick it to lathe and turn it down to the shaft that was going to be eventually the azimuth uh, axis. There was other odds and ends too that needed to be uh, turned and laid out to work with this system. So I built up a back plate for the little motor to uh, mount to and it uh, was held off by standoffs which connected to the top plate of the aluminum box itself. In this picture you can see the uh, pipe that turned into the bearing housing and there's a uh, a flexible coupler that joins that aluminum axis that I laid up for the azimuth drive to the motor itself. I have a plastic gear in there which is going to be a part of the system that runs up that turns the potentiometer for uh, the position sensing. Uh, that, that changed a little bit down the road uh, as you'll see. This rotor box has to kind of emulate a Yesu rotor so I had to get the right ratio of gearing to uh, have the azimuth axis drive the positioning pit potentiometer to get the proper voltage out of it. So I went through my junk and found some nylon gears that would give me close to the ratio I needed and uh, work on them a little bit to make them fit and got them all mounted. Got a potentiometer mounted for the other gear and uh, things lined up. The aluminum box uh, we're using for this was only so deep so things got a little tight. I had to really uh, plan things and, and make things fit to uh, have it all fit into the box as it is the little electric motor or gearbox, gearhead motor sits right at the very bottom of the box so there's no room whatsoever to spare. Now on the road of the assembly or the building of this box I had to build in some end stop micro switches so that the uh, rotor wouldn't be able to go all the way around and, and uh, tear the potentiometer apart. There was no stopping it. The little gearhead motor has a lot of torque. So after all that I had a uh, aluminum knob off another old project and uh, it went on top and it's going to be the mount for the elevation drive. For the elevation drive we kind of cheated a little here. Tom had one of these uh, bought and we'll call them a mobile or truck whip antenna riser to uh, take an antenna up and down say for going in and out of a garage. It worked very well for this application and saved a lot of work. This thing would do uh, would swing up and down 90 degrees and had end stops built in it already. Uh, you can see the hole there where the uh, your mobile whip would go into that would be raised and lowered. But the only thing we had to do was you know get it mounted and then add a potentiometer to it so that the controller would know what position it is at going from 0 to 90 degrees. So basically instead of a nut on the end of the uh, rotor we extended a shaft out that was threaded and it'll pass the body assembly and uh, again once once more with a certain type of gear ratio. The main elevation axis only only turns 90 degrees. Well, I wanted a bit more travel on the potentiometer to give us more resolution, give us more of a voltage uh, variation as the uh, axis is turning. So it took a little doing, but uh, it got got under, got mounted, and it seems to be working. So with the hardware for the two drives finished, I could start doing the, uh, <clears throat> the finer detail work. Uh, mounted a pointer on there that would tell the azimuth position on the uh, base of the box itself. I took a dynamo labeler again and put the degrees from 0 to 360 on the plate. Uh, this also helps to tell you where 
you know, how, how to set up your tripod when you're getting things set up in a field. So you gotta got to have some idea where to point things to get things lined up for the controller. On the opposite side, got the potentiometer wired up to the harness that goes into the box. Got some twisty uh, wire wrap on there to keep things uh, together. And, um, you know, it, it fell together quite well. It does a nice rotation without getting all things all tangled up. The uh, top elevation assembly uh, will unscrew on one plate, completely lift off, and if you need to take it completely off to work on something, uh, the wiring goes down inside to this terminal strip, and you just simply undo it all, and it'll completely separate from the main body for uh, working on. This is a view of the azimuth drive end stop micro switches. The uh, motor is wired up to them, and then from that goes out to the uh, connector for connection to the outside world. The azimuth positioning potentiometer is wired up to the uh, rest of the harness and then everything goes back up to the milled out block where the DB15 connector is. And this is where it's all going to feed out to the uh, control circuitry in the uh, sat track box. One of the other main things that's going to be done is uh, how to mount the antennas to this thing. So I, I built up this little piece of angle iron that's welded to a bolt that simply uh, threads into the um, hole in that elevation motor. Since the idea is to have two antennas, uh, probably a, a VHF and UHF vertical antenna or small Yagi, a cross boom will simply hose clamp to this pipe or this angle iron and the antennas on each end. Last but not least, the thing's got to sit on this uh, standard camera tripod, so I put a small piece of quarter inch aluminum plate on the bottom and threaded a quarter by 20 inch hole in there. That's the uh, usually, usually the standard uh, thread size for a camera tripod. So it'll, this whole thing now can sit on top of the tripod and be tested. So I want to test this thing before I went any farther with it. Uh, instead of building up control circuitry and stuff, I wanted to make sure this all these little motors will, will be able to turn some antennas without getting into too much trouble. I knew from past experience and uh, just the way these motors are spinning that they're going to be too fast for uh, tracking satellites. So I use this dual power supply. Uh, one is for the asthma motor, one's for the elevation motor, and then I can vary the speed up and down. Uh, good enough for now without, you know, building a fancy controller for it. For a load, I just clamped a aluminum crossbar onto the uh, drive and then just took a, a loop Yagi and a 23 centimeter dual Yagi and uh, just clamped them to the to the mast. There's nothing properly hooked up. I just want to load and just see how this thing's going to turn. I varied the voltage on the power supply up and down a little bit to slow slow the uh, speed up a bit. But again, like I said, I just want to see it rotate and then see if things are going to run. I'm not doing any positioning sensor uh, testing at this stage. That'll come later, but uh, so far so good. To be able to change directions, I just merely took the test leads to the power supply and reverse polarity and away it went. Next was the elevation uh, motor test. I really wanted to see how this thing was going to work with the antennas. That little, little uh, elevation motor has, has lots of torque. I had no doubt it would lift it, but you can see it's going way too fast. You can tell by the picture here and how the antennas are slowing down and I'm playing with the voltage coming out of the power supply. It's uh, definitely going to have to be controlled. It's uh, going way too fast. Then the elevation lifts from a different angle of the camera. That little mobile antenna whip raising device uh, makes a good elevation motor. It <laughs> sure made things easier putting this together. So with the main hardware finished, the next part was to be able to control this thing and interface it to the uh, satellite tracking control box. So from past rotor systems I've built, I pretty well had a good idea how to do all this. It's just a matter of getting it done on paper and then uh, designing a circuit board for it. 
The other device I had to get in was uh, the small pulse width modulation motor controllers. Uh, China, of course, through Amazon, I've seen these before, and uh, dirt cheap, so I ordered in four of them, and turned out they're going to work just perfect for the speed control on the motors. I hooked one of them up through my uh, small relay control board, ran the motors up and down, and found I could adjust the speed very well, so it'll be fine. Then the fun started. I uh, I have a box full of these fiberglass electrical enclosures. They're, they're small, but uh, they're very compact and nice to use. So the trick was to get everything crammed inside this box. There's a lot of wires in there, and uh, I fought with it and tried this, tried that, and I was able to get it all put together and finally make it fit. And then I got the umbilical cable that goes over to the rotor itself built. I uh, took the faceplate off and uh, gave it a nice coating of paint and labeled her up to make her look pretty. There's a set of pin connections on the side for a voltmeter connection to measure the, um, we'll call it the position sensing voltage off the potentiometers, just to check it for calibration. Then on the other side's the uh, 12 volt power connection and the uh, DB connection that goes over to the uh, sat track uh, box for uh, auto tracking. So this is the final result here, hopefully. Uh, hooked there back up and we'll do a little more testing. You see the little green light in the middle comes on the LED. That's indicating I put 12 volt power to it. With the two manual switches, I'm going to check the uh, functionality of the elevation up and down and the azimuth back and forth with, uh, with these switches. As I said, these are just manual switches, so you can move the thing up and down more for testing and positioning. And uh, we'll see what we can do with the speed control now and test it out. These little uh, pulse width modulation boards <laughs> seem to work quite good. You can get this thing to slow right down and still have lots of torque. Uh, it'd be nice to have it adjustable like this, I think. It's the uh, elevation motor that really needs control. As you can see here, I can speed it right up and slow it right down. It's, it'll be traveling way too fast. I'll get it all set down to uh, what I call park position, and uh, that concludes this test. Uh, more to come. So in this little video here, we're uh, testing the uh, positioning potentiometer's uh, feedback voltage. This will be the elevation one. I got the motor sped up a little bit, so it don't take so long, but you can see the uh, voltage change in the voltmeter as it moves along. I guess I should have had the camera a little farther back so you can see more of the rotor itself, but uh, this is at... Uh, full stop at uh, what we call it 90 degrees. Then lowering the elevation back to zero degrees. This is the azimuth test. I uh, switch the voltmeter leads into the other uh, test hole and uh, we're swinging her back over to zero degrees right now in a counterclockwise motion. At uh, zero degrees position, the uh, potentiometer feedback voltage is right around half a volt. Now we're going to head her back all the way around to 360 degrees, and there goes my email on my phone again. Well, passing the 180 degree mark, the voltage is right around 2.4, 2.5 volts, so about halfway up the rail, that's good. And we're sneaking up onto the 306 degree mark and the uh, voltage of that position is right around 4.5 volts so it's a good uh, good span of voltage for the resolution so this part checks out I'm going to swing it back to 180 degree mark and uh, carry on 
So back to the load test of the uh, array. I got the old antennas back on there again just to give us some uh, torque. And uh, they're not really balanced, so it, it works to uh, get them to move. I have a multi-conductor cable plugged into where the uh, satellite tracking control box plugs into, and I'm just merely taking wires and grounding them out to get the rotor to move back and forth. So there's some jerkiness going on, but I just want to activate it remotely to check out this part of it again. I can get the motors to turn a little bit slower, but I don't think it's... Uh, don't need to be much slower than this. Uh, get it too slow and I think it would just stop turning. So this is where we're going to leave it at and just move it back and forth and see how it goes. I could speed up the video, but it kind of defeats the purpose of it, doesn't it? So <laughs> leave it where it is. And we're almost to the end of the whole video here, so just hang in there. Who's that ball of character stinking across the screen, I wonder? Anyways, uh, that's the end of it, I guess. No sense doing any more testing and getting it uh, too lengthy here. It was a fun project. So once again, thanks for watching. And 73 is from Skip Victor Echo 6 Bravo Golf Tangle.